Autism is a spectrum, meaning it doesn't look the same for everyone. Some people face major communication challenges while others excel with language but struggle socially. Over the years, different labels like classic autism, Asperger's, or PDDNOS have been used to describe these differences. Today, they're all grouped under Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, with levels showing how much support someone may need. Still, the older terms matter for history and identity. Let's explore each type, showing the many ways autism can appear. Classic Autism Connors Autism Classic Autism, also known as Connors Autism, was the very first form of autism described back in 1943. Picture a child at a busy birthday party. While most kids are playing together or chatting, this child might be lining up the toy cars in a perfect order, repeating their favorite movie lines word for word, or focusing intently on the pattern in the wallpaper. It's not about being odd, it's simply a different way of experiencing the world. Communication can look different. Some people with classic autism may be nonverbal, others may speak later than expected, and some use alternative methods like gestures, picture boards, or scripts. Echolalia, repeating words or phrases, can also be a way to process language. Social interaction is often challenging, not because of a lack of interest, but because things like eye contact or casual small talk can feel as uncomfortable as staring at the sun. Routines and predictability are vital. A small change, like the wrong juice at lunch, can feel huge. Classic autism is usually diagnosed in early childhood, and it's lifelong. With support, people can thrive, but their way of engaging with the world will always be uniquely their own. Asperger's Syndrome Asperger's syndrome was once considered its own diagnosis, but today it falls under the autism spectrum umbrella. It's often described as autism without language delays, and people with Asperger's usually have average to above average intelligence. Imagine walking into a party. While everyone else is chatting about the weather or weekend plans, someone with Asperger's might head straight to the corner and dive into a detailed explanation of black holes, the history of trains, or the inner workings of jet engines. Their passion runs deep, when they love a subject, they study it with encyclopedic intensity. Social interaction is where challenges often appear. The unspoken rules of conversation, when to change the topic, how to read facial expressions, why I'm fine sometimes means I'm mad at you, don't come naturally. Instead, people with Asperger's often learn these rules manually like installing software. They may rely on scripts or guidelines to get through conversations. This doesn't mean they don't care, on the contrary, many care deeply. But the messy, inconsistent ways humans communicate can feel confusing or frustrating. People with Asperger's bring incredible focus, honesty, and unique insight. Their curiosity and dedication often turn passions into expertise that enriches communities and fields of knowledge. PDDNOS, Pervasive Developmental Disorder, not otherwise specified. PDDNOS used to be the in between category for people who clearly showed autistic traits but didn't fit neatly into classic autism or Asperger's. Think of it as the spectrum's wild card. A child with PDDNOS might talk early and use advanced vocabulary but still struggle to understand social rules. They might be fine with flexible routines but still avoid eye contact or display repetitive behaviors. In other words, their profile didn't match the textbook definition of autism, but it was still very much part of the same spectrum. Because there was no single uniform set of symptoms, Every person with PDDNOS looked different. Some were great with language but missed social cues. Others were socially engaged but developed intense and unusual interests. Some sounded formal or robotic when speaking, while others mixed typical speech with echolalia. It was a custom-coded experience. Each person had their own remix of traits. In 2013, the DSM-5 rolled PDDNOS into the broader Autism Spectrum Disorder Diagnosis so it's no longer officially used, but understanding it still matters. It highlights how autism doesn't follow a strict pattern. Every person is unique, and PDDNOS is a reminder that not everyone fits into neat boxes. Childhood Disintegrative Disorder, CDD. Childhood Disintegrative Disorder, sometimes called Heller's Syndrome, is one of the rarest and most heartbreaking conditions ever linked to autism. What makes it stand out is how it appears. Children with CDD develop completely typically at first. They learn to walk, talk, play, and interact just like their peers. Parents celebrate milestones and often believe their child is thriving. Then, sometime between the ages of 2 and 10, most often around ages 3 or 4, everything changes. 
Skills that had already been mastered start to disappear. A child who is speaking in full sentences may suddenly lose speech. A toilet-trained child may regress. Social engagement fades and motor skills like running, drawing, or feeding themselves become difficult or vanish entirely. It's not a small setback, but a profound, often permanent regression. The cause is still unknown. Some researchers suspect genetic mutations, brain abnormalities, or neurological disruptions, but no clear explanation has been found. Because of its severity, many clinicians now group CDD under Autism Spectrum Disorder, though some argue it deserves its own category. Therapy can sometimes help children regain skills, but most will need lifelong care. Families describe the experience as devastating, like watching a light suddenly go out. Rett Syndrome Rett Syndrome is a rare neurological disorder that almost exclusively affects girls. What makes it especially striking is how it unfolds. For the first several months of life, usually up to about 6 to 18 months, development seems perfectly normal. Babies with Rett hit milestones. They babble, smile, clap their hands, and even start walking. Parents often believe everything is on track. Then slowly and suddenly progress stops and skills begin to slip away. This regression is the hallmark of Rett syndrome. A child who once used words may lose speech. Hand use becomes limited, replaced by repetitive movements like ringing, tapping, or clapping. Walking can become unstable and breathing irregularities or seizures often appear. Over time, many girls develop scoliosis, eating difficulties and severe motor challenges. The cause lies in a mutation of the MECP2 gene on the X chromosome, which disrupts brain development. Because girls have two X chromosomes, one acts as a backup, allowing them to survive. Boys with only one X are typically affected much more severely and often do not survive infancy. Despite physical limitations, many with Rett understand far more than they can express. With therapy, tailored education, and creative communication methods, their voices, though unconventional, can still be heard. Pathological Demand Avoidance PDA. Pathological demand avoidance, often considered a profile within the autism spectrum, is marked by an intense, anxiety-driven resistance to everyday demands. The word pathological here doesn't mean malicious. It means the avoidance is persistent and overwhelming, not just the occasional stubborn no every child gives. For someone with PDA, even simple requests like put on your shoes or brush your teeth can trigger panic that feels as urgent as a survival threat. Instead of outright refusal, avoidance often takes creative forms. A child might suddenly role-play as a cat who doesn't wear shoes, spin a funny story, or distract with clever humor. Teens and adults may use more subtle strategies, like procrastination, excuses, or charming persuasion. To outsiders, it can look defiant or lazy, but at its core, PDA is about managing crushing anxiety by clinging to control. Unlike many autistic profiles, people with PDA are often highly social and can seem confident or even outgoing. They're sometimes described as social chameleons, adapting quickly to fit in. But beneath the surface, they're juggling immense stress. Traditional strategies like rigid rules or rewards usually backfire. Instead, collaboration, flexibility, and trust are the keys to helping someone with PDA thrive. Level 1 Autism Requires Support Level 1 autism is sometimes called the mildest form, though that word can be misleading. People at this level can often function independently but still face challenges that affect daily life. Social communication is one of the biggest hurdles. Reading body language, understanding sarcasm, or knowing when to join or leave a conversation doesn't come naturally. They may come across as blunt or aloof when really they're trying hard to connect. Flexibility is another challenge. Change in plans unexpected disruptions, or shifting from one task to another can cause stress and frustration. Special interests and routines often provide comfort and focus, but they can also make it harder to adjust in social or work settings. With the right support, like coaching, therapy, or accommodations at school and work, people at level one can thrive. Many live independently but still benefit from structured guidance and understanding environments. Level two, autism, requires substantial support. Level 2 Autism describes people who need more consistent support in daily life. Social challenges are clear and often noticeable to others. Starting or maintaining conversations can be very difficult, and understanding social cues doesn't come naturally. Relationships can feel confusing, overwhelming, or exhausting. 
Repetitive behaviors and strict routines are more pronounced at this level. A change in schedule or environment can trigger distress, and adapting to new situations takes significant effort. Sensory sensitivities like bright lights, loud sounds, or certain textures are often strong and can make everyday environments uncomfortable or unbearable. Independence is possible in some areas, but ongoing assistance is usually needed for organization, communication, or handling responsibilities. With tailored support, such as structured routines, therapies, and understanding caregivers, people at Level 2 can build meaningful skills, connections, and independence, though the need for substantial help typically continues throughout life. Level 3 Autism requires very substantial support. Level 3 Autism is the most intensive category on the spectrum, describing people who need round-the-clock or lifelong support. Communication is often severely limited. Many are nonverbal or rely on alternative systems like picture boards, gestures, or devices. Even with support, expressing needs and emotions can be very challenging. Social interaction is minimal, not because of disinterest, but because the effort to connect can be overwhelming. Eye contact, group settings, or casual conversation may feel impossible. Repetitive behaviors, rigid routines, and extreme sensory sensitivities are common. A small change, like a new caregiver or altered routine, can cause intense distress, meltdowns, or shutdowns. Daily living typically requires significant help, from eating and dressing to managing medical needs. While the challenges are profound, individuals at Level 3 still have rich personalities, preferences, and ways of engaging with the world. With patience, creativity, and consistent care, their quality of life can be meaningfully supported. Autism is broad, varied, and deeply personal. While medical manuals may group everything under Autism Spectrum Disorder, the reality is that each person's experience is unique. Some may identify with older terms like Asperger's, while others connect with newer profiles or levels of support. What matters most is understanding, acceptance, and creating environments where autistic people can thrive. Labels can help with clarity, but they never define the whole person. Autism is not a limitation. It's simply another way of being human. If you found this helpful, please don't forget to subscribe, like, hype, share this video, and drop your own experiences in the comments. Your perspective might help someone else feel seen.